Welcome to Moments with Marianne. I am so delighted we're spending this time here today. We have a very special guest coming right up who's none other than the actor Dominic Pace. And he's here today to share with us his new movie, which is actually coming out next week on the Sci-Fi Channel, Megalodon. So I know many of you are going, gosh, you know, we just had Shark Week. I'm so sad it's over. Well, now you can get your shark feel with this great new movie. Now, we all have seen Dominic in movies and TV series over the years. He's probably one of the hardest working men in Hollywood. He's been on the SWAT TV series. He was one of the main actors in Superstore that was a TV series as well. And he's done movie after movie after movie. To give you a little background on Dominic, he left college in New York City to pursue his love in acting. And he has been acting ever since. And he's worked with some of the top actors in the country. He's been awarded Best Actor at the 2004 Palm Beach International Film Festival for his performance in an indie feature titled Little Kings. Dominic's acting has also been highlighted in NYPD Blue, NCIS, Desperate Housewives, Scandal, and People Magazine Investigates. And that's just not even the tip of the iceberg of all the acting he's done. He's quite a remarkable actor. So let's welcome to the show, Dominic Pace. Great. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, Pleasure to be here, Marianne. What a joy it is to have you here. We were just talking a little bit ago. You're probably one of the busiest actors in Hollywood. I mean, if you're in all these great movies and now you're coming up with a new movie. Thank you, Marianne. I, I started when I was 16 years old, and, and one of the promises I always made to myself and, and of course, my family as well was to always give 110%. It's a very difficult business, and, and one of the things that have always made me, uh, has always made me self-conscious was in terms of ever being just a waiter or just being uh, working for a moving company. Uh, you know, I, I worked really hard. I left college for this, and, and, you know, of course, there's always that major dream of the, where, the, you know, you have the major A-listers, but at the same time, the great thing now with new media and so many out in terms of entertainment is that if you hustle, a lot of great things can come out of it. So uh, that's where you see all those credits. Uh, it really is uh, just some hard work and dedication uh, for all these uh, years. And, and finally, now we're starting to get to a point where they, they're starting to come to me, which has been great. Well, it's so exciting because your new movie, Megalodon, is actually coming out on the Sci-Fi Channel, um, gosh, within like a week or so. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, correction, they're going to push it off to August, uh, Sharknado 6 which apparently is supposed to be the final uh, Sharknado there. Uh, it, this is going to be kind of the opening act. So I think what they're going to be doing is they're going to be having this on uh, August uh, 6th. I, I'm sorry, not August 6th, but um, uh, the middle of August there in, in terms of uh, having this as an opening act for uh, Sharknado. So uh, really excited about it. First starring role, uh, again, 25 years of hustle, and, and I couldn't be more grateful uh, to be able to have done it with an action film uh, just because that was initially the reason I always wanted to become an actor was uh, because of all the fun things that we did as kids, you know, uh, the, the cops and robbers and all the fun that I had with uh, my friends growing up on my street in Austin in New York. Um, it, it kind of brought back memories from that, and, and uh, I was able to play that out uh, to, to, to a tremendous extent um, uh, throughout the course of this film. So I, I'm really excited and hope that uh, a lot of people will tune in. Oh, I'm sure a lot of people will. And, and, you know, I'd love to touch on what inspired you initially to become an actor, because I think a lot of people always would love to hear, like, the inspiration that uh, makes people follow a certain path. Sure, absolutely. Uh, for me, I mean, it really was that adrenaline rush. When I played, I, I played high school baseball, and uh, up until that time, it was a high school musical. I did Grease. I played Danny Zuko, and it was such an amazing high that I received uh, from the, and, and the praise, not only from the school, but also from my family, but also the gratification, the instant gratification that I was getting from athletics, but not to the extent to where I felt it on the stage. And it was such an electric feeling, and especially, you know, this society, regardless of whatever your political or your social beliefs are, I mean, it's becoming so politically correct that more and more I find myself driven and, 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 and drawn uh, to the craft because you're able to truly – uh, be yourself without any apologies, and, and there's something very, very refreshing about that, especially in this day and age of the corporate world. I, I, I would hope that even in corporations, you know, where obviously you need to be on your utmost and best behavior, uh, they have some uh, workshops or seminars every now and then in order to just kind of let it out, because I think as human beings, no matter who we are or what uh, walk of life we come from, 
uh, you definitely need to, you know, you have that animal instinct inside, and I think it's so refreshing, uh, no matter what you do, to be able to kind of come out, uh, come out, uh, come out of that, and and uh, and, and kind of, it, to a certain extent, it's, it's very therapeutic for uh, no matter who you are. Oh, I would agree with you 100%. I mean, you know, I'm sure as an actor it's it's a certain way for you. As someone that goes to the movies, I mean, a lot of times people are just looking for ways that they can kind of escape what's going on daily, like as you were saying. And, and what a great way to do this with uh, the start of Shark Week in your movie. Yes, absolutely. I, I mean, you know, the great thing is my kids, I have two sons, Dante and Bennett. They're 13 and 9. And for the most part, Dad, what we usually do is we end up playing a lot of uh, crime, uh, doing a lot of crime dramas. So it's not always within their genre. So the great thing about this is it's something that the kids are finally hyped up on because it's something that uh, fits their, their demographic, you know, kind of the tween demographic of, you know, big sharks. But it's not too horrific to where even kids that are 9 and 8 years old can watch it and not get too scared. Do they ever join you on set? Uh, absolutely. Uh, for me, I, I take great pride. You know, every booking, it takes a tremendous amount of hard work to get there, and, and I've been so fortunate to have done it. I call it the major leagues on, on either major national television or major motion pictures. So on the days that, you know, it's like a, a fire chief or a police officer being able to hold their son or to bring their son to work, uh, I get the same amount of pride because the amount of work that goes into it behind the scenes is tremendous. So uh, there's nothing that makes me more proud than to be able to show my sons, hey, you know, work hard and, and uh, good things end up happening. So it's something that I really enjoy uh, sharing with my family on the days that we actually end up um, uh, booking, uh, booking those fun roles. Oh, I'm sure they're just loving that. My goodness, who wouldn't want to be on a movie set watching yeah. their dad, you know, play out a part and, and just see that all come together in the finished product? Absolutely, absolutely. And, it, and again, this is kind of fun because I play a Navy captain. Uh, and, again, we're doing just kind of a regular surveillance in the Pacific Ocean. So we're fighting the Russians. We've got this 150-foot shark we're fighting. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of action. And it's, it's not too tongue-in-cheek. It's not too campy. This production company more or less usually tends to go in that direction where they like to have a little too much fun. But the one thing I love about this director, James Thomas, and also this script, is that they still kept it grounded, even though it's uh, science fiction and, and uh, it kind of uh, leaves the suspension of disbelief in terms of obviously we're dealing with a, a prehistoric shark here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and, and it really draws a lot of people's attention because when you talk about sharks and Shark Week, I mean, most people don't want to hear about a bigger shark, you know? <laughs> right, right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, you're gonna have people just drawn to this movie just because of that. Well, and so I, I've got to ask, like, you know, when they first reached out to you on this project, how did that go? Because I'm sure they were just like, "Hey, you are our first choice." I mean, my goodness. Uh, well, that's the great thing now, Marianne. It's 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 taking so long in terms of developing a resume strong enough that they're able to now, uh, you know, we're in a situation where they start coming to me. So that alone, and I've been experiencing that over the past six months, where for the first full, almost full year, uh, I'm getting to a point where now I'm getting more offers as opposed to where, you know, you had to go out and die for the ball. You had to hustle. So finally we're getting to a point, especially with some of the higher channels, major network, you're, you're never going to be too confident because, again, you can get blown off the ball by major, major movie stars, whether it's for a guest star or a series regular. But some of the higher channels now, I can't tell you what an honor it is and how, uh, and how privileged I am to be able to now finally – Get a resume and also a reputation for just being consistent, working hard. This script, I had four days to memorize 100 pages, if you can believe it or not. I was intimidated. I was a little scared because usually with most of the work I do is mostly television to where more or less we end up having about four to six pages at most, and you have about two or three days to be able to prep for that. Um, this was, we were running and gunning. The one thing that sci-fi does not have, it's unlike Warner Brothers or Universal Studios to where you have a 60 to $70 million budget. They had to get this thing done quick. So the problem is, is that you have maybe one or two takes to be able to nail it right, and then they have to move on. So the irony to it is you need to be more prepared than the absolute professional A-lister because they are running through pages day in and day out where normally – the average amount of pages, I would say, on a major motion picture would be about like six to seven. We were looking at maybe about 17 to 18 pages per day. And i, I got to tell you, the actors really need to be on point. Um, you know, you need to know your lines. You need to be prepared. You need to have that adrenaline rush. The one thing I'll say is that I was really drawn to that kind of uh, work ethic and that work style because basically it keeps your – 
it keeps your head in it, keeps your heart in it. So it actually, uh, ironically, ends up giving you a better performance because it's almost like doing a stage play because there's no room to come up for air. <laughs> so it was a tremendous <laughs> amount of fun and, and a privilege to be able to be cast from uh, James Thomas and also Asylum Entertainment. Oh, I, I can imagine that just was like a whirlwind. I mean, that sounds like a lot of work, and most people don't realize how much work goes into making movies nowadays. Absolutely, without question. Uh, but the great thing is, is, you know, Marianne, as much as the business is difficult, we chose what we loved, and that's why each and every day, and I hope that everybody does that, it's, it's not like you're coming to work. I mean, as much as it's hard work, and whether it's a fisherman or a real estate agent or a fireman or a teacher, elementary school teacher, there has to be that element of pride and, and, and honor. And that's the one thing for me to where I feel so alive doing this craft, and you never know what's going to come every day. I, I had a nice little string of appearances on Jimmy Kimmel over the last couple of weeks, and, and every, each and every week is exciting. So even though there's a tremendous amount of hard work, and not only my, my field but everyone else's, uh, there's also a tremendous amount of gratification and privilege for doing what you love as well. Oh, what a great message, not only to send just normal people, but to your own kids. I mean, loving what you do is so important nowadays, and, yeah, it, it doesn't feel like work, right? No, not at all. Not at all. I mean, it really, like I said, it's to a point, you know, when you, when you start off when you're 16 to 18 years old and you, you get into that audition room and there's a tremendous amount of people, you know, you can tend to get nervous. But now it's to a point to where you just gravitate towards it because it is such an amazing challenge and adrenaline rush. And, uh, you know, people always, you know, you kind of downplay or you talk down in terms of aging. I can't tell you how gratifying it is. And, again, this is not only as an actor, but I think in whatever field or just your attitude on life to where, you know, you start living without a care. And I can't tell you how refreshing that is, not only within your work, but also life in terms of just kind of doing what it was that you wanted to do to begin with. Mm-hmm. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. So I'm excited because you're also playing opposite um, Michael Madsen. And, gosh, that's got to be pretty inspiring to be working with him. It, it was a dream come true. He is certainly a legend. Uh, the great story, backstory to that is 1994, I was in college for one year at Marriage College in Poughkeepsie, and each weekend they used to play movies. And the first experience I had with that movie night was Reservoir Dogs. That was the first time I saw Madsen, even though, you know, he was in The Natural and Free Willy and such. But the first time I really tuned into this legendary male character actor. And the one thing for me that not only on screen but off screen was him sort of being a mentor to me. And, and I can't tell you how privileged that was for me to, all, you know, kind of walk in my footsteps, but at the same time to be in the presence of one of Hollywood's legendary character actors. I mean, let's face it, Quentin Tarantino, uh, he is amassing uh, probably one of the most amazing casts you could ever imagine with this Sharon Tate movie, and I hope they do it in good taste. Um, but he's a member of this, the, the Tarantino clan, and so to be able to spend a couple of days with him on set and to be able to work alongside him was just sort of a dream come true, especially as a, a male character actor where, you know, I would love nothing more than to walk in his footsteps and have his level of credits uh, when I'm his age. Oh, it must have been such an experience, my goodness. And then you mentioned, because you're also working with director James Thomas, and I've heard he's quite the dynamo. Yes, without question. I mean, the one thing great with James is the run and gun. You know, for me, it's, it's just we, we work in a way to where the, one, the, the greatest acting lesson, if anybody's listening, I can give to the kids and to, to the youth, is to get out of your head. And the one thing about James Thomas, the, the way that we work because we're on that level of budget, is you have no other choice but to go hard and to go fast. And it is absolutely amazing to work with him because basically – when you're going at that pace, there's things that come out of you that you, didn't, you, you don't rehearse for and that you don't prepare for, but those are the most beautiful moments on screen, and I'm sure that a dancer or a painter could say the same in terms of their work or a musician to where you are so in the moment because of the way that he works and the fast and the intensity and the professionalism that he brings day in and day out. Um, I can't say enough about him, and, and uh, my only regret is that we're both uh, in our early 40s, late 30s, uh, I just wish I met him in my 20s because uh, he's become a dear friend over the last few months as well. Well, I, I don't doubt that the two of you will be working on many more projects coming up in the future. I mean, yeah. um, you're such a profound actor. You do such an amazing job, and James is just a fabulous director. So I'm looking forward to seeing what comes from the both of you in the future. And, and it's so hard to think about other projects, but, I mean, with you, you, you've already got like four or five other projects working that you're working on. 
Absolutely, Marianne. You know, again, I, I, I attribute it to, and again, if anybody is listening that's younger and just kind of getting started in the business, the one thing I can't say enough about that people don't really put focus on are the odd jobs. The odd jobs are very humbling. It is a day and age right now, if you read the news over the last couple of months or even the last few years, of so much ridiculous entitlement, Marianne. Uh, you know, you, as, as I'm sure with your parents and myself, we were raised with such respect. And there, there, if you look out, and I, I don't want to say, you know, put an overall blanket on society these days, but there's really a, a, lack, a, a lack of respect and a tremendous sense of entitlement. So when you take the manager at Starbucks or the manager at a restaurant or what have you or anything in customer service right now, my heart goes out to them so much because the corporations are bending over backwards. I don't know if it's for the fear of Yelp or it's the fear of social media or what have you, but there's a certain point where I wish we could bring back in society that the customer is, in fact, wrong. But with that being said, when you have these jobs, I cannot tell you and the dignity and the level of respect that you have for yourself. You need to swallow your pride, and the problem with that and, and this is righteous and justified with any human being. It's not just Dominic Pace. But the problem with that is that you need to speak up for yourself. You should deserve to have that, self, that level of self-respect when you come into work from 9 to 5 or if you're working a dinner shift from 5 to 3 o'clock in the morning. So the great news about all of this <laughs> and about life, and, again, this attributes to, you know, to any, any path of career, is that no matter what you do, it starts building a fire within you. So when you see these projects now, it is basically coming from a lot of the anger and the frustration from having to be so humbled uh, to, in, in the service industry to where you have to put up with a tremendous amount of drama. And, and again, I, the, the general public is no exception. They have to put up with a tremendous amount at any given job. But the great thing about it is there's something you can do about it when you're in that position, whether it's assistant manager or whether you're a secretary and your boss is, you know, and you'd hate to use the word harassment, but whether you're in a situation that you're not happy with, you either sink or you swim. And the one great thing, again, is when you build up that fire, you say to yourself, no, I'm not going to accept this as my career path, and you start doing things. And that's where all the explosion has come from now, where I, I can't be busy enough because um, – uh, I, I'm so proud to have worked with some of these directors and these future directors, but it's all a combination from uh, the, the restaurant industry, <laughs> from basically having a, quite a dramatic experience in terms of wanting nothing more than to get out of there and to pursue my dream. Well, you definitely are teaching a lot of people how to swim with the sharks with the, not just your life and how you go about it, but your work ethic as well. And I really applaud you because, you know, a lot of times people just, they, they just think that people in Hollywood show up and they drop a few lines and they leave and, you know, and, and it's kind of a done thing. But, I mean, this is, this is hard work. But, it, again, you know, you can kind of circle back around to it's a labor of love, you know. Without question, without question. And again, I mean, you know, again, it's such a cliche of follow your dreams. Um, but when you're put in a certain situation in life that you don't want to be in, whether it's career, whether it's a relationship or what have you, uh, organically you will start gravitating, uh, most of us, towards the right direction and, and be able to do what you love, which is the ultimate happiness in life. Well, yeah, it doesn't matter when we get there. I mean, I have to agree with you. I have a friend that was a, a dancer on Grease, the movie, and he oh, wow. showed up every day. I know, <laughs> a little old school. But he showed up every day, did not get paid. They were like, oh, we can't pay you, we can't pay you. You know, but he just showed up for the privilege to be on set and to dance. And to, he was one of the, back, the um, dancers in the background. And they ended up later, I guess the um, producer came up to him later on after it was all done and said, you know, I love to honor people who are loyal. So I'm going to make sure you get royalties from this. So you wow. never know when you pick up these odd jobs what's yeah. going to end up, um, you know, working out as well, as, you know, as maybe as a grease, you know. <laughs> you just never know. Without question, yeah. You remind me of a story from The Godfather where there was a gentleman playing the piano, and he just had one little one day of principal work, and uh, lo and behold, I mean, <laughs> more residuals than you could ever imagine from that movie over the years from foreign and domestic and, and everything else. But, no, absolutely, and I tell young actors, take everything. You know, a lot of times people get picky. They're like, oh, you know, I, I just you know, I want to hold out for Marvel or I want to be with CAA, you know, the major agencies in Hollywood. But I can't tell you, uh, and I can't stress enough, the importance of working with directors because you never know where they're going to be in a couple of years. And they're also going to appreciate 
that hard work ethic and that level of professionalism where you continue to keep getting called back. I did a short film probably about seven years ago, and we were just in a, locked in a garage for two days uh, doing this, uh, this kind of scenario. Anyhow, long story short, the director got half a million dollar financing uh, from the wife's uh, parents. And it ended up uh, being a great film. I ended up having a supporting role opposite Doug Jones, William Forsythe, Steve Valentine, uh, Max Adler, Will Kemp. Uh, it was a tremendous film. But, again, the same thing. Had I not shown up for two days of unpaid work for a short film, I wouldn't have had that opportunity. Uh, and, again, I, I can't tell you how many actors do pass on those opportunities because they, they, they're looking with their head in the clouds. But you've got to take one step before the next. Yeah, you, you, you know, it's all about following that passion again and, and uh, not being afraid to do a little bit of hard work. Oh, well, my goodness, Dominic. I mean, I'm a big fan of yours, I, of your work. I think you do a phenomenal job. I know our fans are as well. Um, where can people connect with you and be part of your community? Sure, absolutely. Uh, I have a Facebook page, uh, just the page alone, uh, then also LinkedIn as well as uh, Instagram. Um, uh, and, and that would be the great place. I am also going to be appearing at the San Diego Comic-Con, one of the biggest in the country, in the world. And I sign for free. I don't charge. Uh, so please, I, nothing would please me more for people to come by and, uh, and uh, get a signature and uh, take a picture. And I'd love to see them if they're in the San Diego area. Oh, how exciting. Well, there you hear it. First opportunity to meet with Dominic and, and be part of his community. Well, you know, Dominic, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. Please, and my privilege, Marianne, and hope to uh, speak with you many more times in the future there. Well, thank you, Dominic. That would be so much fun. I can't wait to hear about your next project and all the work you're doing in Hollywood. So I highly suggest everyone join me in connecting with Dominic on social media, be a part of his community. I love getting those inside scoops on his upcoming projects. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it as well. And then you can learn more about all the great work that's coming out of Hollywood. Just a reminder, Megalodon the movie will be airing on the Sci-Fi Channel on Monday, August 13th at 8 p.m., Make sure to check out when it's going to air in your community and have a Megalodon party. Tweet, post on Instagram or on Facebook, and tag Dominic and let him know that you're watching Megalodon and join in on the fun. Well, we're at the end of our time today. I would like to thank everyone for tuning in. You've been listening to Moments with Marianne. And remember, make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work. And while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Moments with Marianne airs every Thursday, Friday, and Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Mountain Time. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmarianne.com for more information.